If I had to sum up today's entire video in a single word, it would be overplayed. I've said it before and I'll say it again, the Generation Wars trend is overplayed. Yes, some Gen Z calls out millennials for being quirky or outdated in their fashion choices, supposedly. Yes, some millennials accuse Gen Z of being oversensitive, brain rot, skibbity alpha, whatever. I, I, I understand. I just typically don't think it's anywhere near as serious as it's usually presented. But today, I have been unable to ignore this whole generational conflict framing because the Huffington Post just dropped an article called Gen Z is particularly weird about age gap relationships. And so I am particularly interested in what they have to say about this since I am in fact a card carrying member of Generation Z. Are we weird about this? Who is calling us weird? Uh, what do they mean by that? And will we finally be able to put this age gap relationship discourse to rest? Probably not. But first, welcome. My name is D'Angelo. Hello, and I am your professor of seasonal philanthropy, which is a very real degree that I definitely do have. Or maybe this is just me broadcasting myself talking in my room like YouTube used to be. And in today's lecture, portions of it may be familiar because this very same topic actually came up on this channel about a year ago. One of the first videos I ever uploaded to this channel was called, Why Do Celebrities Always Date Someone Like 20 Years Younger? And in this video, we talked about four different celebrity pairings. We had Leonardo DiCaprio and his penchant for dating 25-year-old models, a trend that was so weird that when his current girlfriend turned 26, it actually kind of made pop culture news because this was pretty much the first time this 49 year old man had ever dated anyone over 25. We talked about Beyonce and Jay-Z, who by their own accounts seemed to have started talking when Beyonce was 18 and Jay-Z was 30. And we talked about Aaron Taylor Johnson and his wife Sam, who picked him up when he was a teenager. This woman, being 23 years older than him, met him when he was 19 and then they went on to get married just a few years later. And so I bring those examples up for a couple reasons. A, to show that my criticisms of weird age gap relationships relationships are not limited to gender. Mrs. Taylor Johnson is no more or less weird than Jay-Z because, as I pointed out in my video, uh, picking up teenagers when you're an adult is weird. That being said, I did say I had four couples. You have George and Amal Clooney. Yes, he is 17 years older than her, but they met when she was 35. Feel how you will about a 17 year age difference, but the truth is, a 35 year old is more than capable of making her own choices. And so we shouldn't be infantilizing people anytime there's any sort of age gap, because morally, an age difference isn't a wrong thing. If someone's 30 and their partner is 50, that's not better or worse than if they were the same age at all. However, my point was, you can argue as much as you want where that switch flips to where it becomes okay, but you're never going to convince me that it's 18 or 19. That is just weird. Anyway, the second reason I bring up those old examples is because many of them actually pop back up in this Huffington Post article. But this one also touches on a different celebrity couple, which I didn't even think about last time, Billie Eilish and her very short-lived boyfriend, uh, Jesse Rutherford? I don't know who this is, but I, I do remember this happening. She was 20, he was 30, and so I'm glad they included this because instead of focusing on things we already discussed in the prior video, we get to focus on some of the new things that this article brings up. It's been a whole year since we got into it, so let's get into it. Gen Z is particularly weird about relationship age gaps. Here's why. Is an 18-year-old dating a 25-year-old problematic? Some Gen Zers think so. I don't know, chat. Is an 18-year-old dating a 25-year-old problematic? I can give you a stronger answer and say that I, at age 26, would never actually be able to find any of the things I'm looking for in a relationship in a teenager. My opinion on 18-year-olds is like, just let them be kids. Let them have fun. Why do I want to introduce the problem of dating me and my complex self to a child? I think being 18 is complex in a completely different way uh, than being 25. And that's why I would not do so. But that's my opinion. Anyways, they're getting me good, y'all. The article hasn't even begun yet. Even the image caption is a little interesting. As of late, Beyonce fans have debated whether Beyonce was groomed at 19. We've got groomed in quotation marks. When she started dating Jay-Z, who was in his early 30s. In 2022, a then 20-year-old Billie Eilish caused a stir when she began dating Jesse Rutherford, a musician 10 years her senior. Very interesting. So let's see what we've got. Is a five-year age gap in a relationship a little untoward? What about a three-year gap? On social media, Gen Zers, at least those who are chronically online, are constantly debating the ethics of age gaps. Even if some relationships are perfectly legal, that doesn't necessarily make them ethical, many say. Fellas, is it 
chronically online to think it's weird for a 25 year old to date a teenager y'all i promise i'm trying not to object to the very framing of this article but i just find this weird let me say this my mother who could never in any universe be described as chronically online she would give the side eye to any of the relationships i just mentioned like can my mom name any Billie eilish songs no, not even if her life depended on it. But if I approached my mom and I told her that anybody in my life who was 30 just started dating a 20 year old, she's gonna find that weird. She's not Gen Z, she's not, she doesn't even have a Twitter account to my knowledge. I get what HuffPo means by this because there is a specific way that Gen Z talks about these things that I would label chronically online. But oh man, we're, we're starting off strong here. Even if some relationships are perfectly legal, that doesn't necessarily make them ethical many say. Which, yeah, I agree with. Anyway, the article goes on to suggest that Gen Zers are like hyper aware of power dynamics and unbalanced power issues because of the Me Too movement. And that makes sense. Yeah, there's so many ways in which consent can be twisted and honestly coerced, etc. And power, having power over somebody due to social dynamics, money, wealth, etc. That is one way in which it ceases to be black or white. Age is another source of imbalance. It's another source of power, honestly, that can play into a lot of things. And so I get why it was brought up here. So it says, there's the obviously icky examples, like the recent short-lived romance between Aoki Lee Simmons, a 21-year-old who was apparently with a 65-year-old restaurateur, Vittorio Asaf. Bro, 21 and 65 is crazy. Like, what do you mean? Yes, they're both consenting adults, but it was still unseemly, critics said. If anything, the argument that they're both of age is something groomers cling to, as one young woman on threads put it. So, I mean, at least this article agrees that this is obviously icky. And I also agree that a hyperfixation on the legal age of consent is a red flag and definitely something that groomers do seem to bring up. Folks, if somebody knows the age of consent in all 50 states, run, run. If they start citing the law to you, you are in the wrong place at the wrong time. Adulthood was meant to signify voting slash draft age, she wrote, but everyone knows your prefrontal cortex is not fully formed at this age. And then HuffPo interjects with a parenthetical saying, this difference between so-called brain age and chronological age, you might be 21, but your brain is underdeveloped, often gets brought up in these kinds of conversations. And yeah, I, I, I agree. I'm sorry, I just find it weird that we're saying chronically online and then bringing up all these points that don't really sound chronically online to me so much as normal. Nothing about this article thus far has indicated that this is a particularly Gen Z issue, but the night is young. There are gender swapped examples too. So they talk about Aaron Taylor Johnson and Sam Taylor Johnson, as I said. Anyways, then there's the less expected critiques. Is four years too much of an age gap? At 25, I wouldn't even date a 21 year old, reads one tweet with around 80,000 likes. This person also said, you might be mature for your age, but you're still your age. A lot of people are mad that I prefer not to date a 21 year old, but I wouldn't even look at most of y'all to begin with. So why does it really matter? It wasn't up for debate. I don't care what y'all do. I agree that like, there's nothing wrong with this tweet. This person is just talking about themselves. And I also share the same opinion. No hate to anybody who's 21. Good job, proud of you, and good luck, have fun. I already did that, it's your turn now. No, four years is honestly not that big of a difference. I just genuinely don't want to date somebody who is freshly in their 20s. Why has Huffington Post taken this person's tweet and presented it as a critique? Literally using the word critique. Who did this person criticize? You know what I mean? What about 10 years? asks HuffPo. Fans of Billie Eilish were up in arms in 2022 when the 20-year-old singer revealed that she was dating fellow musician Jesse Rutherford, who was in his early 30s. One viral tweet about the 10-year age gap reads, Jesse Rutherford was alive during George H.W. Bush's presidency. Billie Eilish cannot legally drink. I will say this though, being in your 30s or even your late 20s and dating someone that you can't legally take out for drinks? is crazy to me. Anyway, this article also says, long established relationships aren't safe either. Safe from what? Being talked about online? So they talk about Ryan Reynolds and Blake Lively. Ugh, I would rather not talk about either of these people, frankly. And then of course, Beyonce and Jay-Z come back up. And then we have this. Non-celebrity couples are getting called out too. I was 19, my now husband was 27. Oof, 
My now 13 year old child calls him my predator. Alongside laughing emoji. Probably only half joking. What do you mean probably only half joking? This is a lot of intent to ascribe to somebody Huffington Post to make a point. Bro, am I being weird about this article? Is this me being terminally online or does the framing of this come across as odd to anybody else? I genuinely want to know. Anyway, this person seems to be replying to a thread that says, if you're a woman in your early 20s, please don't date that 30 year old man. And this person said, don't tell women what to do. You're looking out for yourself. Instead, grow a pair and get the status a 30 year old has. Look, I'm just going to be honest with you as a man. AKA somebody who other men will talk to without worrying about how women are perceiving it. I have never encountered a 30 year old who was chasing after people in their early 20s. That was normal. Like I've met multiple people who do this because it's not uncommon and they are all unhinged. They have insane takes when it comes to age and things that they're probably not sharing with their partner. I don't think I've ever told the story because it's one of the grossest things that just lives in my head rent free. But back when I used to work at a gas station convenience store and people used to love to have conversations with me instead of allow me to do my job, there was one guy at the counter and this like, I don't know, really young girl, probably the same age as me because I was 19 at that time. She walked in, walked out actually thinking back i don't know why she did that she probably stole something but anyways the guy at the counter who was definitely like 10 years older than me he said something along the lines of like oh yeah i would love to like get a girl like her pregnant put on an extra 10 or 15 pounds and then she would be perfect and self-report i was just kind of like yeah because First of all, I was also just a 19 year old. That was the creepiest thing anybody had ever said to me. But I promise you, stories like this are not like uncommon. I'm sorry, but the average 30 year old who is talking to 19 year olds is weird. So I don't think it was a terrible tweet. Yeah, maybe that person was telling women what to do. But the truth of the matter is you should know people in their 30s are in a very different place mentally and they may very well be misleading you about their intentions. Are all 30 year olds as creepy as that dude? No, obviously not. But uh, that's that's your dating pool. <laughs> that's what you got to contend with possibly running into if you're kind of looking at that age range. Anyways, sorry for telling the worst story of all time. Ugh. It creeps me out even thinking about it. So now we have a section called why Gen Z seems to have such an aversion to age gaps. Is Gen Z just more prudish on this subject than prior generations? Not necessarily, says Justin Lemeler, a research fellow at the Kinsey Institute who's been studying age gap relationships for roughly 20 years. In 2008, he co-authored a study that found age discrepant couples reported experiencing significantly more social disapproval than people in gay or interracial couples uh okay what am i supposed to do with this information <laughs> i'm sorry people thinking you're weird is more oppressive to you than racism question mark i understand why this has been brought up this is just an insane point and it's just brought up to say the discomfort around these types of relationships isn't anything new what is new according to Lemiller, is how comfortable gen z feels about publicly and vocally disapproving of these relationships even on people's personal instagram pages and they point out about aaron and sam taylor johnson recently speaking out about the bizarre online judgment they've received i will say this from the way some people do talk about these things especially younger people People, you would think that they think they have some sort of chance of undoing this situation. Aaron and Sam Taylor Johnson are not going to divorce each other because you talked about their relationships super hard on their Instagram pages. But I think that's kind of leaning more so into parasocial behavior than anything. The article also points out that Eilish and Rutherford brushed off the criticism from overly concerned fans by dressing up as a baby and an old man on Halloween. I mean, again, the framing. Is it overly concerned to question whether or not it's possible that a 20 year old could have been groomed by a 30 year old i don't think so also this is incredibly disturbing and i don't know why they thought this was a good idea this is like a very very edgy response look at us guys we're not bothered at all we're subverting you the things you're saying but i'm gonna be honest with you this guy is weird because actually i do remember him now after they broke up he put out a song that many people assumed was referencing their relationship. And he said, uh, feel like Alejandro when she gaga on my goo, which 
may very well be one of the worst lyrics of all time. Honestly, I'm reading it now and I wish I wasn't reading it now. He also says she's been listening to me since 2013. I know she's got daddy issues. Welcome to the family. What did I tell y'all about these 30 year old men who want to date 20 year olds? They are not normal people. Anyways, they talk about how Gen Z believes age can create a power imbalance, which yes, obviously, but they actually bring up a good point. In the past, people were scornful of both the younger and older partners in these relationships. And especially when the younger partners were women, they would get called gold digger with the implication that they were the ones doing the exploiting. That terminology doesn't always fly with Gen Z. I definitely remember that being a kid. Anytime you had like a young woman, just let her partner have a lick of gray hair. And people were like, oh, she's in it for the will. I bet she already got him to change his will. It's, if I can be problematic for a second. Honestly, what's wrong with getting the bag? Like, what's wrong if she's trying to get in his will? Personally, I don't see the problem there. But alas, Lemeler says, Gen Z now seems to cast the younger partners as victims who are being preyed upon or groomed. I love grooming being in quotation marks every single time it's mentioned as if it's not a real thing. They then ask Gigi Ingle, a relationship psychotherapist, who worries that the term grooming is being over applied and losing its meaning. The narrative is really toxic here and in many other cases. Trans people are groomers, gay people are groomers, older people dating younger people are groomers, and this just isn't accurate. It's a really fear-mongering time we live in. Okay, I have so many thoughts about this and some of them sound like they're conflicting, but give me a second. I do see the term grooming get misapplied. I, I have seen it happen clear as day, getting tens of thousands of likes on Twitter. I've seen people get mad because one person's 19 and one person's 17. I'm sorry, but that is not grooming. Grooming is something that you have to specifically do. Grooming doesn't mean any age gap that makes me uncomfortable personally. And yeah, I see some people use it that way. Like a 17 year old and 19 year old, they're, they're both kids. You know what I mean? Grooming does have a definition, which is important to keep alive. That way people can know what it is and avoid it. That being said, uh, this quote has conflated like multiple issues here. And so here's what I would like to say. Being transgender isn't a unique quality that allows you to be a groomer. It's not possible to be a groomer solely because you are gay and you've done nothing else. These narratives are disgusting and yeah, they should be called out because it's literally just homophobia and transphobia. However, should I have to point out that it is very much possible to be a groomer because you are an older person than the person you're dating? Age is a trait about somebody that can be used to foster an uneven power dynamic. Like, what do they mean? I just don't believe all examples of older people dating younger people being discussed fall under fear mongering, are really toxic, and I especially do not believe they're rooting from the same hatred that is driving the trans people are groomers, gay people are groomers narrative. This is just an odd statement. And I find it weird that this is the second time like gay people have come up in this article. Why do they keep making it about that when it's not about that? You know what I mean? Gen Z may be hyper focused on this because of their age. If you're a 35 year old woman, you're probably less hung up on the idea of a 50 year old guy expressing interest in you. No, duh, you're going to be a bit less concerned about being groomed if you are older. Hello? I think younger people may be more susceptible to manipulation and are therefore more afraid of it. The reality is, says this psychotherapist, age gap relationships have been happening since humans have existed and it is absolutely not some one size fits all. In the vast majority of relationships like this, nothing untoward is happening. I'm sorry, this is a crazy claim to make with no sort of data or statistic. Anyway, moving on from these incredibly odd quotes, we have this section. Here's what Gen Z has to say about age gaps. Talking to actual Gen Zers, you'll find that their opinions on age gaps run the gamut. As with most things, their takes on the subject are much more nuanced than those found on X, the platform previously known as Twitter would have you believe. Yay, okay, some credit here that we're not all chronically online, it's not all stemming from people who use Twitter. That said, many are genuinely bothered by age gaps. Some 20 somethings say their opinions are more colored by their own personal experiences. So they interview Layla, a 23 year old, who says that when she was around 21 and 22, she tried talking to guys who were 30 and she realized it wasn't right. They had so much more life experiences than me 
and it was awkward being from different generations. So they'd give her blank stares when she would bring up memes or things from TikTok, and she wasn't a fan of their humor either. Men recounting the upteenth Seinfeld episode or that one stepbrother scene gets a little old after a while. Trying to relate to one another just didn't work out, and it felt awkward and wrong, she said. Look, I know some people may consider that to be a very superficial part of a relationship, but the truth of the matter is, I would be kind of sad to quote a piece of media that is part of my collective experience, and the person I'm talking to has no idea. Similarly, I would be sad if they were trying to tell me all these things that are really interesting to them and impacted them and all their friends, and I was like, uh, I was 10 when this was happening, but okay. I I completely understand how that would lead someone to say this is not working. I believe a relationship between an 18 and 25 year old is problematic, Layla said, noting that this applies regardless of gender. And I agree. Not because you're not going to get your Seinfeld references, but because you know darn well at age 25 that an 18 year old is a kid. Let them be kids. They then interview this other person, Mona, a 21-year-old college student who even finds her own parents' 11-year age gap a little predatory. Her dad was in his late 30s and a divorced father of one when he met her mom who was in her late 20s and didn't have children. Now, look, when you're in your late 20s, you are an adult, obviously. But that being said, there are things that can make this uneven. They can result in a woman in her late 20s, despite the agency she has being a woman, just not having equal resources or options to a man in his late 30s. So, I mean, if I heard this story, I'm not going to say, ah, uh, nah, sorry, fam, your dad's a groomer. But I just wouldn't dismiss this as having potential red flags because... I don't know. I'm not in that relationship. And notice, by the way, that this article didn't even really quote Mona. All they have is the word predatory and quotes. I have no idea what she actually said about this relationship. Did she provide more details? We'll never know because this article just wants us to all sound insane for some reason. And like we just we hear an age difference and we attack. No one's relationship is safe. Mona also says, I do think that an 18 and 25 year old together is unacceptable. I'm so glad that this is becoming more of a common consensus. Yay! We're finally realizing how weird that was, dear God. She is particularly weirded out when she hears people talk about how their partner basically raised them or taught them how to be a woman, as Beyonce said to Jay-Z in a 2006 birthday toast. Oh God, that's so creepy. This is why people are calling it out. Yes, numbers are just numbers. No, age does not inherently make you a bad person, obviously. But these sort of attitudes that there's any sort of paternal role in a relationship is disgusting. Mona is also wary of anyone who almost exclusively dates young people. The Leonardo DiCaprio's of the world. And you know what? Let's talk about that for a second, because I mentioned it in passing in a previous video. I said, there's something to be said about a man who doesn't seem to have anything to offer women his age. And people sort of like that train of thought. So you know what? Let's go into a bit more detail. If I was 49, like Leonardo DiCaprio, and I noticed, wow, 20 year olds seem to be really into me uh, for some reason. I would be questioning, what is it about? about me that someone so young finds interesting and why is that not translating to people my age now obviously uh leonardo dicaprio has millions and millions of dollars and so nobody can pretend like that's not a plus for him but no even me at my current age just 25 no 26 I keep forgetting how old I am. I've read too many numbers, y'all. Every year, my age is less of a part of my brain for some reason. Age 26, if I notice like 19 year olds find me cool, enough to date i would be like eh, what 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 exactly am i doing or how am i presenting myself in a way where like kids think i'm cool <laughs> shouldn't i at age 26 be able to offer something equal to somebody who is age 26 if you have literally never dated anybody your age but you have serially dated younger people how have you not looked at yourself and been like wait this is so weird. Shouldn't I be able to engage with someone on my own level? Why have I exclusively sought out younger people? I personally would never be happy in that scenario. And so, yeah, I think the Leonardo DiCaprio's of the world are weird. This is the annoying part, by the way, where uh, I think a lot of people start bringing up biological attraction. 20 year olds are just hot, obviously. Like, if you could do it, you would too. And I'm like, uh, self-report moment? A hot 20 year old can look like a hot 20 year old. 
And I, at age 26, just feel like that has nothing to do with me. You know what I mean? That's my opinion on the whole uh, attraction angle. No, not really. I used to be 20 and hot. <laughs> now I'm 26 and hot. Why would I not want somebody in my own age range? I question. If you think you can't be older than 20 and still attractive. Hmm. 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 Anyway, Ray, a 22-year-old who is queer, said they don't find age disparate relationships inherently problematic. I agree, though. I, I also do not find age disparate relationships inherently problematic, and I hope that's come across in this video. They said there's a lot more than age that gives people power over each other, and if you consider five years in age gap relationship, then Ray is currently in one. Though my partner is older than me, I have a college degree and she doesn't. So arguably, I have a better financial and career outlook that would make me me the quote unquote abusive one if you're using that language. And so again, based off the ages, Ray is 22. That means their partner is 27. This is just another case where just because I wouldn't really date a 22 year old, that doesn't say anything about Ray's relationship at all. Age gaps may be more common in the queer community, Ray said. I don't know a gay guy who hasn't been with someone much older than him. It's just normal to us. And again, it's the same thing. We're like, can a man be preyed upon in a gay relationship? Yeah, obviously. But does that mean that's always what's happening, even if the ages are different? No, of course not. Problematic dynamics can exist no matter the age. People now don't know what grooming is and just use the term as synonymous with age gaps. It's funny because I feel like this article has presented Ray as like a dissenting voice. They say not everyone agrees. What exactly has Ray said that doesn't agree with the things these other two people have said? I'm sorry, but I agree with literally all positions from the three people they've mentioned 25 year olds dating an 18 year old weirdo behavior can someone in their late 30s have an uneven power dynamic with someone in their late 20s yeah they can are age gaps inherently problematic absolutely not and is there context that can make one situation appropriate and another inappropriate yeah i just it's so funny how this has been laid out i just from what's been presented in this article feel like if you got these three people in the room they would not actually disagree with each other anyway the last person they bring up is amelia 24 who again says age matters less than the stage of life you're in and that grooming has specific definitions and i really like what she says here do i think it's possible for people like that to have a healthy and happy relationship Sure, but the older I get, my desire to talk to high schoolers grows slimmer and slimmer. I really couldn't put myself in the shoes of someone who would want to befriend a high schooler. Man, I want to be friends with these people. Or is that technically me grooming them? Twitter, let me know. I just feel like Gen Z is coming across just fine in this article. It's not weird. Now, Amelia rightfully calls out that a lot of the overcorrection when people talk about this feels paternalistic, as she puts it, and it can rob women of their agency. And that's very true. When we have these conversations, they should not be from the perspective of like, you are incapable of making your own decision. Yeah, you may be 22, but you know what other age has two in it? 12. Honestly, why didn't Huff Poe just pull examples of people actually being terminally online? Why did they not have a single example of someone making a stupid argument here? I feel like this would have all made a lot more sense. Anyway, we get a surprise return cameo from the one guy who said like, uh, age gap people get more hate than interracial couples. The reality is there are likely just as many happy May-December unions as there are disappointing ones. Believe it or not, we often see more not less equity in these relationships, he says. Okay, so people in age gap relationships are actually more likely to have even power dynamics. Great. That where are you getting these numbers from? I why can you not cite a source? Consider supporting Huff Post starting at two dollars. If I give you two dollars, will you cite a source? All of the Gen Zers we spoke to said that ultimately two consenting adults can do whatever they want in their private lives, even if others find it off-putting. Good. You notice how literally everybody you asked said this. This is not a weird take whatsoever. Men can like women that are younger and not be a creep, Amelia said. He also can be a creep, but some random person with a Twitter cartoon avatar shouldn't necessarily be the judge of that. Thus ends the article. Uh, in the related section, we've got this one called, I'm 63, she's 22. Here's what most people get wrong about our marriage. Well, I was reading and then Elon Musk and JD Vance and Donald Trump just popped up. Oh, they're gone now. Okay, man, I almost want to read this one. But you know what? what? One thing at a time. I think my brain is going to explode if I have to read one more number. So let's just call it. In conclusion, 
That was a weird article, but that's my take on the situation. Dave's take on the situation is that as somebody who is several hundred years old, he finds all of this discourse to be a little silly because everybody's a baby to him. And I'm of course excited to hear your take. I mean, this is the part of the video where a layman would ask you to subscribe, like the video and leave a comment, but I will ask you to enroll, evaluate the video and submit your feedback because I am of course running a 100% completely, totally all the way. Okay, maybe not really somewhat unaccredited university. Probably. Just ask anybody in the student body and they'll confirm it for you. We're totally legit. And as for me, whether you'll see me in 24 hours or 24 months is honestly anyone's guess. But until then, thanks for watching. Your homework for today is to be chronically offline, even if it's just for a minute or two.